Transcriptions is one of those things that's just got to be part of your practice routine. It really shows how the techniques that we learn on our instrument can be used in a musical situation. But with that being said, when we first listen to jazz, especially players like John Coltrane and Wes Montgomery, they can often be quite intimidating and difficult to transcribe. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you three beginner jazz solos that are a little bit more accessible and will help you get started on your jazz guitar transcription journey. Let's do this. All right, guys, my name is Jamie. I'm the founder of jamiehorroyguitar.com. That is a blog and videos. And make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button there. That way you're not gonna miss out on any of the free lessons which I want to share with you to help you get better as a jazz guitar player. Okay, so free beginner jazz transcriptions, what are they? The first solo, which I would like to start with, is by Chet Baker, and the solo is over It Could Happen To You, the jazz standard It Could Happen To You. Now, there's an interesting story about Chet. A lot of people said that he didn't know any music theory whatsoever. So, in that sense, he was a complete ear player. You know, he had no knowledge of scales and things like that and he just used his ear and obviously Chet Baker was known as a jazz trumpet player and this solo is actually a vocal scat solo so really for me it's an important lesson that a lot of the music that we play especially as guitar players actually comes from within us and we have the ideas in our heads and the guitar is just a way of trying to get them out and this scat solo by Chet obviously is a trumpet player this is all a vocal solo so it's not reliant upon his instrument so that's why it's a good um, solo to learn in that sense but as a guitar from a guitaristic point of view the in, in solo really fits nicely on the guitar in fact you can play the entire solo pretty much within a two octave G major scale so it works out really well in that sense it's quite slow it's quite melodic so you're not going to find it too difficult to access some of the phrases really and it really shows you how to use so many jazz techniques that are important especially when beginning to play jazz like for example the first couple of phrases <laughs> He really just uses chord tones to get from one chord to another. That particular one there really falls back to that A minor. And he really uses the strong chord tones to pull the chords together. And I don't want to show you too much of these solos because it's your job to transcribe them. Another great thing about this specific solo is that there's some great licks in there as well. Like for example, in the bridge, you could just have that as a cool major two five one lick and use that. There's also a great 16th note minor two five lick which is fantastic as well. So if you're in it just for a couple of licks, it's great for that sense. But if you want to learn the entire solo by ear, that would be best, the best thing to do if you're new to jazz. So the assignment which I usually give my students is to transcribe the 16 bar solo. The actual song is over a 32 bar form, but Chet solo is only over 16 bars. So the assignment I give is to play Chet solo for the first 16 bars, then compose your own solo over the second set of 16 bars, 16 and 16 is 32, and compose it in the style of Chet. So use what you learn from the first 16 bars and use it in the next 16 bars. So that's the first solo that you need to transcribe. It's called It Could Happen To You by Chet Baker. Okay, so the second solo that we're going to learn here is um, called So What by Miles Davis. It's Miles' classic solo on So What, which was uh, his composition as well. So this is off, his, off of Miles' classic kind of blue album, and that is obviously essential jazz listening if you haven't heard that already. And it's one of the, this solo, specifically Miles' solo on this, is one that's worth checking out because no matter 
how far you are on your development as a jazz guitarist or a jazz musician, many jazz musicians often come back to this record and this song because it's so great, you know, and I think it's one that's always worth checking out. But Miles' solo specifically is very melodic and it's not, some, some of the runs are a little bit more difficult in the bridge, but certainly those first two A sections are not impossible to transcribe. In fact, you only really need to know a Dorian scale most of the runs. Can be played in a two octave Dorian scale, so it's a fantastic study of how you can use a Dorian scale in a musical situation and create language from it. And it's also a masterclass in phrasing. Miles connects all of his phrases so well, and you often think that you know it's just like a story in how he how he constructs his solo. There's not any random wasted notes whatsoever. So it's a real masterclass in phrasing and using the Dorian scale. And certainly, if you could at least transcribe one chorus of that, that's gonna really help kickstart your jazz guitar phrasing, and especially uh, your playing over a modal tune as well. It really helps you play well, just over one specific chord, like a, a D minor seven chord. So that's the second solo, Miles' solo on So What. The final solo here, this is a jazz guitar channel, so of course I've got to include at least one jazz guitar transcription. And this solo is Cool Blues by Grant Green. Cool Blues by Grant Green. Now, Cool Blues is a jazz blues theme by Charlie Parker. <laughs> And it's just that one phrase repeated over and over again. Obviously, Grant Green's recording his take on this. And really, for me, this is a masterclass in how you can improvise over a jazz blues progression. It's really um, a great way in which you can combine both using bebop ideas and blues ideas as well. So when you check out this solo, Grant has some very bluesy ideas. <laughs> And then there's other parts on this where he really, where he's thinking about minor two fives, major two fives, and it's a great combination of both really. And the assignment which I usually give to my students for this one is to try and use Grant's philosophy when you're improvising over a jazz blues. So for example, you could play very bluesy and then address some of the chord changes like this. So hopefully you could hear there that there was times where I was just thinking blues language, blues phrasing, and then other times where I wanted to get a little bit more bebop, I wanted to think about the chord changes. So I think it's a great one to uh, learn for that reason as well. So those are the free solos, but guys, what I really want to know is what beginner jazz solos do you recommend and what do you enjoy? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's try and build up a little community here of jazz solos that we can all get started. These are just the three that I've learned a lot from and many of my students have learned a lot from, but I'd be curious to know what you think of these as well and what your own are. So, there we are, free beginner jazz transcriptions. I hope you've enjoyed this class. If you did, please click the like button and um, yeah, please check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.